the things that we're going through, yes. the stresses, the concerns that we have, yes. we lay them down, yes. Lord. Yes. And we focus our hearts and our mind on you. Praise your name. We pray this morning that uh, we have open hearts to receive from the Holy Spirit, that we have ears to hear the message that will be shared this morning. Yes, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord, for all that you do in our lives, and we are here to worship you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we pray in your Son, Christ Jesus, mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Jesus. Amen. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. 
that the trumpet calls. Oh, yeah, oh, boy. Yeah, I believe. I desire to be. I desire to be. This is my bass loud. You can almost feel yourself singing your way out of pain. You can sing your way out of turmoil. Sing your way out of frustration. Is my bass not loud? Not because you are doing something, but because the Lord is doing something through you when you raise praises to His name. I raise a little. Thank you. 
beautiful place. We thank you for another beautiful day in this world that you've given us, Father. We ask that your Holy Spirit come and just touch each and every heart here as we lift a joyful noise unto you, Father God. Get our heads straight, Father. We come against any spirits of infirmity, Father. We come against them right now by the blood of Jesus. We cast them out, Father God. They are not welcome here. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, we just ask that you bless those that are still on their way, those that are online watching, Father God, and your Holy Spirit also touch them in a way that only He can. And Father, I just thank you so much once again. In Jesus' mighty name, my prayer, and everybody help me close by saying, Oh, 
this world No one can express How much you deserve Isaiah Morton, right? Isaiah Morton. <laughs> Isaiah Morton has a prophetic gift. So, what song do you think we're singing right now? What? <laughs> Oh, 
So we do have some announcements for you this morning. Um, before we call our sister Chris up, or she's up here already. Um, uh, Wednesday night Bible study, five o'clock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, we will be finishing up the book of Ephesians, chapter six. Uh, it's been awesome. If you want to join us, we're at the tail end of it, but you can still come. In. Every single time we dive into the word of God, it's an amazing experience. It's an amazing time. So come and join us. We have fellowship. We have food. We have prayer. Um, so this Wednesday, 5 o'clock, come and join us. And I will call up our sister Chris for more announcements. Thank you, Chris. Good morning. Guess what? God loves you. And on Monday, people will be getting together to pray for you. So put your specific prayers in the bowl back there so they can pray specifically for you. Wednesday night Bible study, like uh, Jason just said, 5 o'clock, dinner, good times. Thursday hula, 5 o'clock, right here. <laughs> Friday morning yard ninjas at 8 a.m. if you want to come work on the yard. Friday night, celebrate recovery, 6 o'clock right here. Yeah. I was thinking this morning, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't have those people in my life that I can just tell stuff to, and they're not going to say, oh, that happened to me. Let me tell you what I did. Uh, and then they kind of go off and start talking about, you know, their advice and all that kind of things. Or guess what I heard about Chris. <laughs> right, right? Like, you need people that you can trust that are just going to listen, and guess what they're going to say? They're going to say, thank you for sharing. That's it. So I have that group at Celebrate Recovery, only it's divided by gender. We have a little um, <laughs> meeting first, a little lesson or a testimony, and then we break into our women's group and our men's group, and that's where you can just say, like, you know what I'm really dealing with? Let me tell you what I'm really dealing with. And those people say, thank you. And you get five whole minutes. So come check it out. It's kind of cathartic. Um, Saturday men's ministry was yesterday. If you're like, wow, I missed it. It'll be again on October 19th, 9 a.m. And I heard their breakfast. Always. Then women's ministry is only on Zoom. That's at 8 a.m. And that's always on the last Saturday, so that's at uh, nine. Sorry, September twenty eighth. You got to bring your own breakfast because it's on Zoom, right? Twenty oh. seventh. Um, oh, I can't read a calendar. Is that a Saturday? Wow, that's next week. Twenty one plus seven. Okay, it's the twenty eighth. Amen. It's next Saturday, okay? <laughs> next Saturday. Um, we have an annual Christmas fair, and we fill this place with booths over there and over there and out around in that room over there um, of people selling things, um, you know, or sharing things or whatever they want to do. Um, you could have a booth there, a table, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you are ever been to our church or you know somebody from our church, it's free. But uh, for other people, it's a whole $10. So um, spread the word. Come and uh, set up your table. And it's – I didn't ask Pastor yet, but I'm planning on December 7th, which is the first fr Saturday in December. Um, it's a really good time to hang out. And the mission is actually to bring in people who haven't been here before so they could be like, oh, those people are really nice. I should go back on Sunday, yeah, or on Friday or Thursday. Anyway, uh, so that's the Christmas fair. Um, if you want information about it, I send out an email. I also send out an email about every Sunday service, 
So if you want to be on the email list, let me know. Um, we're also on YouTube Live right now. Sorry that the sound was not so great this morning, but um, they can hear us speaking very well. So that's good. Uh, we're also at newhopevolcano.com. And I also send out a weekly email. You can also share our YouTube videos if you want to spread the word. And it seems like I do a lot of things. So if you'd like to help out, there's room to serve. Mahalo. All honor and glory are his. I, I saw a couple of new families this morning, so I, yeah. I do want to make the announcement that youth group, if you want to go with Auntie Stacy, uh, right after announcements, she'll be heading across the way. She'll wait for you. She'll come collect you if you want to go um, to youth group this morning uh, and be blessed. It'll be an awesome yeah. time. Be an awesome time. <laughs> so I, I have to admit, and uh, I don't know if I'm ashamed to admit or proud to admit, I'm not sure, but... I've gotten to the age where I'll, I, I like to hear a good dad joke every now and then. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I heard two good ones this morning I'll share with you. Uh, the first one is, what do you call a priest that becomes a lawyer? A father-in-law. <laughs> See, okay. So we, we're from the same. Some people didn't laugh, and I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> All right, well, you might like this one then. How many Christians does it take to change a light bulb? We don't know. They're still holding hands in a circle praying for the light to come back on. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, so I think that's it for announcements. We're about to collect the tithes and the offerings. And, of course, we always like to say that if you are visiting for the first time, so please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if you are a part of this wonderful, amazing family, this church body, we ask that if you do give, that you give with a cheerful heart. Um, I forgot to mention there's two ways to give. Uh, one of them is the website, newhopevolcano.com. There's a hamburger menu on the top. Of the home page you can click down you can there's a spot that says give online you can enter your information and you can give that way if you're in the building and you want to give we have an offering bowl in the back by grandma sue's seat just drop your uh tie your offering into the bowl uh whenever you have a chance and so that's the two ways that you can give this morning let's bow our heads and pray over the tithes and the offerings <coughs> Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you, Lord. We're so grateful and so blessed. And this morning, we just want to continue to worship you and thank you, Lord. We want to have a heart of gratitude for all that you do in our lives, for all that you do in us, for all that you do through us. And the truth is, Father, that some of us have plenty, some of us don't have as much. But your word says to be content in all things, Father. And we can be content because we have you. We have the free gift of salvation and eternal life that is found in our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And so we rest in that, Father. This morning, we want to lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. And we pray that we use it according to your will. We thank you so much for allowing us to be here on this campus, to gather and to worship you safely, to be with one another this morning. We thank you for the word that will be shared from our brother Happy. We pray that you speak through him and to our hearts. We pray that your words will dwell on our hearts richly, that we can take what we learn here and apply it to our lives as we leave through those gates this morning. We thank you for the time of fellowship that you have um, set aside for us after service, Lord. We, we're just so grateful and we thank you for everything. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise, and we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, brothers and sisters, if you can help me welcome our brother Happy. He's going to share the word of God with us today. Thank you, Happy.
The PowerPoint up there yet? Yeah. Morning, everybody. Morning. Time for me to check in. Touch bases. I want to look in your eyes so I can see down to your heart. Okay. Welcome for you folks that haven't been here. Okay, your first time here. Okay. Like, what's wrong with this picture? It's like... John's not there, okay, and okay, kind of stuff, okay, good seeing you, good seeing you, Betsy, Ralph, okay, aloha, okay, I check in today, all right, there you go, I like that, okay, I like that, I guess I should turn this thing on, because everybody always complains that I'm so soft-spoken, they can, they can never hear me, so how's that? Oh, I can hear me. That's scary. <laughs> Let me turn this thing off. Hey, I got to share with you. Um, I've shared it with a couple, so a couple already. But uh, I saw this great cartoon on Facebook um, that I actually thought about putting on my PowerPoint, um, and and it was a cartoon of a police officer with his ticket book out, writing a pastor, okay, a ticket, and the caption was, Pastor, okay, I'm sorry I gotta write you up for doing a 45 minute sermon in a 25 minute sermon zone, okay. And as I was sharing that, you know, I got rebuked, and the person said, oh, I wish you did a 45-minute sermon. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead. If I could get you guys to open up your, your Bibles to Matthew 25. And we're going to be taking a look at verses 11 through 30 today, um, which is about the parable of the talents. Okay. And what an incredible study this was for me in preparing for today's sermon. And it's my prayer. More will be revealed as, as we get into it. Okay. Uh, starting at verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to the one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. Okay. But he who had received one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside these. And his Lord said to him, <laughs> Well done, good and faithful servants. Long words I long to hear. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also had, two, uh, uh, he who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look. I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid 
and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have at least received back uh, my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him, you guys, and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has more, for everyone who has more, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has, will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's pray. Father God, we are just so blessed to be able to come fellowship with one another, open up our hearts to your Holy Spirit, as we sing you praise and worship and give you praise and worship corporately, where it's just magnified when we're able to do so, Lord. And we come to you with humble hearts, Lord, this morning. And as we go through your word today in this scripture, we would pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, we would ask that you would Allow us to see ourselves in this parable accurately. And we ask your empowerment, Lord, that once you show us where we're at, you would empower us with the blessing of the Holy Spirit to continue to take us where you have created us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The PowerPoint up yet? Oh, okay, good. Okay. Spent a lot of time on that PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, first off in our lesson today, of course, Jesus shares the parable of the talents. Now, let me explain, okay, some of the, the things we need to understand here. So basically, for those of you who don't know, uh, a parable is something cast alongside something else and these things should be on your your worksheet if you want to fill in the blanks now jesus's parables were stories that were cast alongside a truth in order to to illustrate that truth his parables were teaching aids and can be thought of as an extended analogy or inspired comparison also on your handout is a common description of a parable is that it is an earthly story with heavenly meaning. Jesus shares this parable, the story of a rich man who has three slaves. The rich man gives each slave an amount of money referred to as a talent, okay, based upon that man's ability to steward and care for the money. Now, when Sandy and I sat down to actually do the math on all of the talents, okay, and find out what the, what the amount really was, we come to find out, first of all, it's important to understand that a talent is just a unit of weight. If you can remember back in, you know, the old Christian movies that you're looking at, they always had that balance beam scale there, you know, and they would put the talent on one end and then, you know, whatever the, the currency they were using, gold, silver, whatever, okay, was placed in on the other end until that came into balance, okay? So uh, as we proceed now, according to Divine's Expository Dictionary, okay, um, a talent was equivalent to 6,000 denarii, okay? With me so far? Okay. Since one denarius was the wage for a day's work, one denarius was what people were usually paid back then for a, a full day's work in the fields. Okay. 
That's roughly equivalent to what would be earned over 6,000 work days, which is like a little bit over 16 years. Okay. So we're not talking chump change here. Okay. When you figure that, that uh, the, the, the first servant got, what, five okay, talents, second servant got two, last servant got one, that's eight denarii. Okay, or eight talents. Now, if you multiply the eight talents, okay, by the six thousand denarii, okay, that's where you get how much time, you know, somebody would have had to to work for, for, you know, that amount. So we're talking a lot of money. In this case, the rich man was actually rich, okay, financially. So anyway, he entrusted a large sum of money to these three servants. But it's important to understand that, that this parable isn't about money, not at all. Even though the first steward is given five talents, the second is given two talents, and the third is given one talent, okay? um, and the master told them to care for his money, and the first two servants used the talents to trade and gain profit. They returned to their master with double the talents. The third servant was fearful and hid one talent, or hid the talent he was entrusted with, okay, and then later returning that one talent to his master. Like our scripture says, the master scolded him, saying that he should have invested the money and at least, you know, earn some interest for his master. Okay, moving on, okay. We have uh, been saved for a reason. How many times have you, you heard me stand up here and say, we were saved for a reason, okay? It's not about just the work that Jesus did by shedding his blood for us on the cross, okay? It's about him sharing who he was. We have salvation in the sense that our relationships are are now right for those that accept Jesus Christ into their lives as their personal savior. And in addition to that, he goes and he sits at the right hand of the father as our mediator. If you can remember the, the scripture, when Jesus was sharing this with his disciples, his disciples were freaking out. Lord, no, 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 you can't go, you can't go. And, and, and Jesus says, but I must go because when I go, I will then give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. So putting it in context, okay, uh, we now have Jesus sitting at the right hand of God the Father, okay, you know, speaking to the Holy Spirit that motivates us and empowers us to do the things we need to be doing here on earth. You know, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we were prepared from beginning, even before we were even created in our mother's room. God has and had a plan in giving us the specific DNA he has given us to do what he knows he has created us to do. That's pretty awesome when you think about it. Yeah. So Christ keeps no servants or members of the body to be idle. We have received our all from him and have nothing we can call our own but our sin. And you think about it. So receiving talents or, in our case, spiritual gifts from Christ is in order for us to do the work of the church. The edifying of each other. Because you see, as a church... We are only as effective as our weakest link in here, which means we all must be about 
bringing one another up. And as you'll see, we're all given different spiritual gifts in order to do that. So more about spiritual gifts. The manifestation of spiritual gifts is given to every believer to edify and build up the church. If you're saying, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you have at least one gift. At least one gift. And it's important to understand that the day of account, just like in our parable, is going to come. Okay. And for many of us, it's going to come as a day like tomorrow as we know it is not going to come. Because everything's going to be different on that day of judgment. So we must all be reckoned with as to what good we have got to our own souls and received to our own souls and have done others by spiritual blessings or gifts that we have received. It doesn't mean that improving our own natural fleshly human powers can entitle any of us to God's divine grace. That doesn't get it. Got to come through the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts that we receive. You know, it is the real Christian's liberty and privilege to be employed as our Redeemer's servants in promoting his glory and the edification of his people, the body of Christ. What a joy it is, okay, to experience fellowship within the body, okay, knowing that we were created with a purpose, being able to ask the Holy Spirit to empower us to demonstrate, okay, those spiritual gifts, and then see the results. It's incredible. There is no greater joy. There is no greater joy. And if you're not experiencing it as a Christian, shame on you. You are really missing out on God's glory. It's the love and grace of Christ that compels us as members of his body to live no longer to himself or herself but to Christ who died for us and rose again. Master life, you know, one of our, our first scripture memories, okay, was from Luke 9 that talked about denying ourself. And we got to do that so we can put Christ in the center okay, to, to go out and do his will. He died for us and rose again so we could have that power of the Holy Spirit. And I found in an expert excerpt from Matthew Henry's commentator, uh, commentary that he stated, quote, those who think it's impossible to please God and in vain try to serve him will do nothing to gain God's good pleasure. Not about doing it in your power at all. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. In fact, from our parable, we even have confirmed that the slothful complain that God requires of them more than they are capable of and punishes them for what they cannot help. And how many times have we heard this as we were sharing and witnessing to, to somebody? I'm sorry, you don't get it. Huh? You don't get it. Whatever they may be pretending, the fact is results indicated by their behavior is they dis dislike the character and the work of our Lord. Bottom line, the slowful servant is sentenced to de be deprived of his talents. And that's why, you know, I've titled today's sermon, okay? If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Those who don't know the day of the visitation they're going to experience shall have things that belong or think that belong that, that gives them peace and joy. They're going to be hidden if not taken away. 
No value. Their doom is to be cast into outer darkness, which is our usual way of expressing the miseries of the damned in hell. Folks, any of you that are walking with one foot in and one foot out, okay, you need to understand there's going to be consequences for our choices. Okay? And as you hear me say many times, okay, either we're going to be given the smoking section in internal damnation, okay, um, or we're going to be given the non-smoking which is eternal glory with Jesus Christ for eternal, eternity. I can't even con conceive that, eternity. So in today's parable, the talents, the rich man who traveled to the far country represents Jesus Christ. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven, promising to return at a later date. And we see that in Acts 1, 9 through 11. The servants in the parable represent us, Christ's disciples or converted Christians God has called. And we can see that in John 6, verses 44. Okay. Now the work that they were undertaking represents the edifying and building up of the body for the kingdom of God. It's all for God's plan. Are you going to want to be part of that or just stand by on the sideline being that armchair quarterback going, raw team, raw? The parable goes on to describe how the master gave his servants different amount of money to look after according to their gifts. Now, as we know, two of the servants worked creatively with the money and generated more. The third buried it because he did not trust the master to understand if he would lose it. Then when the master returned, he judged what his workers had produced with the money he had entrusted with them. The first two were praised and given more things to work with from the master. The third servant, however, was condemned to outer darkness because he had not done anything creatively with the money he had been trusted to look after. He just dug a hole and buried it and didn't even have to think about it after that until the day of reckoning. The reason he has not served his master well was because he was faithless and fearful. Human, fleshly issues that we all struggle with. You know, we can per perhaps better understand this parable from Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Paul told them that God created us as individual works of art, but not just as pieces of art. We also have the potential to be co-creators, helping to build the kingdom of God here on earth. Awesome. Okay. I love participating. Okay. I love participating in God's plan. Because still by nature, I don't do anything unless there's a motive in it for me. And that's the truth. That's our flesh. But what a joy we have when we can allow the Holy Spirit to pour out on our lives and then bless us abundantly in ways that we would have never thought of. You know, we already recited Ephesians 2.10 that says, when we are, um, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Paul meant here that God has blessed us with all spiritual gifts and talents that we need to do what we're being asked to do. He is saying that there is no end to the width and depth of spiritual gifts that God has blessed us with. That the gifts are as numerous as the stars in the sky and they are combined to create our uniqueness 
as his children and heirs of the kingdom. We are brothers and sisters, truly, in Christ. And I love that. I love you, and you, and you, and all of you, with God's love. My love always falls short. Therefore, we were created to be blessed as co-creators with God. So we can experience celebrating the fact that he is the God of love and all of creation. Woohoo! Yeah? Okay. How incredibly awesome it is that God allows somebody like me and, and somebody like you to be in a world separate from him and, and, and continues to love and delight in watching us discover, experience, and demonstrate the gifts he has blessed us with. You got to know because God is everywhere at all times and knows everything, okay? He's watching. And I think, I, as I said last time up here, I know when it comes to me, he's got to have a sense of humor, okay? You know what I'm saying? It's like I can just see, oh, happy, 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 happy. Okay. Okay, it's important to understand that you get into the word and learn about your spiritual gifts. Can do, do so in Romans chapter 12. I'll let you find it in there. Okay. And also find the spiritual gifts documented and talked about in 1 Corinthians 12, as well as Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 4. Now, those aren't the only places, okay, that you read about the spiritual gifts, okay, but they're the primary places of teaching about the, the spiritual gift. You just need to understand every gift from God is special and important. We're created by him because he loves us. And in his love, he has a plan for us. A new heaven new kingdom, new spiritual bodies, times to never experience pain, loneliness, and all those worldly depressing feelings that we experience in our walk in, in the flesh. So by acknowledging the spiritual gifts given to us, when you think about it, we are glorifying him. Utilizing our spiritual gifts is glorifying God our Father. And that being said, what do you think happens when we don't utilize our spiritual gifts in our relationship with God the Father? Not good. We're not glorifying him. The scripture tells us that that he wants us to produce fruit. He wants as many people included in his banquet, the wedding banquet of Christ, that he can give. We even have a parable about that. I think we somebody covered it here not too long ago. Okay. Each spiritual gift has the ability to help draw others to a relationship with the Lord. And as Christian believers, that's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're charged to do. You see, God's people are like a body with many parts, as you know, yet those parts work together for the wellness of the entire body. Even though there are many people in the world, we can work together to share his love and glory. One body part is not better than another, we learn in past teachings. Every person has a purpose and is gifted by the Holy Spirit 
to carry out God's plan for our lives and that the life of others. We're all equal. As believers, you and I are all equal. And we're here to lift each other up, be as effective in the ministry God has chosen for us as we possibly can. So just as the Apostle Paul explained in his letter to the Corinthians, each of us is uniquely equipped with gifts meant to serve and uplift the church. So whether you have the gift, okay, and here I, I left some blanks on your handout, okay. You see each gift, okay, uh, we learn kind of is it's focused and can be utilized in specific ministries. Okay. So in the, the prayer and worship ministry, okay, we have spiritual gifts that are talked about in the Bible called shepherding, <coughs> exhortation, spiritual discernment, and prophecy. In the teaching and preaching ministry, okay, we have wisdom, knowledge, teaching, and leadership that we can utilize for that. In the serving ministry, we have gifts of helps, mercy, giving, and healing that we are, are geared to utilize for that ministry. And, and again, witnessing okay, um, is faith, evangelism, apostleship, or miracles. And if you need to... It's not up on the handouts? Oh. Okay, which one do you want to hear? All of them again? Let me repeat all of them again. Okay. The worshiping ministry, shepherding, exhortation, spiritual discernment, and prophecy. In the teaching ministry, Wisdom, knowledge, teaching, and leadership. In the serving ministry, where we see the, the gift of help and mercy, giving, and healing, and then in the witnessing, or evangelizing ministry, we do see faith being demonstrated, evangelism, apostleship, and miracles. Now, I didn't, I thought about putting down a description of what each gift entails. I'm hoping it was the Holy Spirit that said, no, let them ask. Let them get in the scripture and find out on their own. Main thing though is that embracing and exercising those gifts not only strengthens our collective faith, but it also spreads the essence of Christ's love to various tangible ways. It's when we realize our spiritual gift uh, that we are actively participating in a divine tapestry woven by God, showcasing the vibrant diversity and unity of his kingdom. Please understand that th there is no way or there is no way our spiritual gifts are to be used to draw attention to oneself or put on a showy display. People do. Heaven help them. This was part of the problem in the church at Corinth. Members were exercising their spiritual gifts to edify themselves without regard to anyone else um, that may have been needing something or, or needing our help or, or doing things that needed help. Their methods resulted 
in chaos in the church service. They needed to be reminded that the greatest gift of all is, is God's love. For without demonstrating those gifts and love, none of the other gifts are going to be profitable at all. Scripture tells us that any gift that is used for personal gain or without love is like a clanging symbol to God as, as well as other members in the church. It's where you start hearing ah oh, hypocrisy and you know um, backbiting and you know all those other things. Okay, folks are talking about that that diminish their um, willingness to be part of our church. Even the most powerful spiritual gifts memorably displayed, if it's not done in love, cannot glorify God the Father. As I said, different people are given different gifts. Not everybody receives the same gift. Okay, it's important that you know you have at least what been given one gift at least okay and then we see others in our church body and read you know in the epistles that many of the apostles and other believers demonstrated several different gifts that i shared with you again as we are gifted with the spiritual gifts okay meant to work together to bring us all up. Just like I said before, we're only going to be as spiritually effective as our weakest link in this church body. We use the spiritual gifts for his glory. Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father through him. And then I love Paul's writing to Timothy, okay, where he's explaining and bringing young Timothy up in the church and letting him know that we need to take care of and develop these gifts. Um that God has given us. Matter of fact, okay, um, Paul says we are to fan into flames every spiritual gift God gives and put them to good use. Okay, I use this metaphor often, but watching those old Roman movies and days of the Colosseum and stuff, it, it seems like there's always a scene where the gladiators are in there. You know, it must be during the week because they're practicing with their swords. They're practicing how to use their shields. They're practicing, practicing, practicing. That's how we become proficient. That's how we end up to know that we know that we know we have this specific spiritual gift. Um, you know, there's various spiritual gifts assessment or and you know, tests that are available that you can tune into what your spiritual gifts might be. And they're okay. Okay. They're okay. Uh, may be helpful for you, may not. Okay. But uh, what's most important is to be prayerfully serving the Lord. And the gifts of the Spirit are going to be confirmed by the Holy Spirit in you through the practicing of those gifts, through the demonstration of, of, of time, by experiencing more teaching from the word, and certainly by demonstrating those gifts as we actively mentor or disciple a new believer along the spiritual pathway of our sanctification. When we use our spiritual gift, it should be with humility of heart, and aimed at service, ensuring that all the glory and honor are directed toward God. Because it's his blessing. He gave it to him. 
So as we continue to explore and employ the spiritual gifts entrusted to us, let's commit to using them as instruments of love and beacons of hope, all while exalting God, our Father above. Because I'm here to tell you, there's no greater joy. Okay. So in closing, let me, um, let me ask, which are you? Which are you? A faithful servant or one that hides their talent and their professions of faith in Christ? Which are you? Have you buried your talents or are you using them? Are you a servant of Christ or self-seeking servant that is only interested in meeting your own needs? The questions you got to ask yourself. Only you and the Lord knows. In the same chapter where Jesus spoke the parable of these talents, he speaks directly to both believers and unbelievers, saying, whoever loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of, of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life is going to lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So many times when talking and trying to mentor somebody, they're giving me all these excuses and reasons that they can't come to church, can't come to Bible study, can't come to celebrate recovery. Can't, 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 can't. And when they, they share why, it's like, there's sometimes I feel like, tell it to God. <clears throat> tell it to God who has given his all for us. Sacrificed his son on the cross for the forgiveness of sin. So that we can have this relationship with him. So whether when you're confronting yourself and examining yourself and asking yourself, am I utilizing my gifts? Let go of the excuses. And if you need help, pray to the Holy Spirit, because that's what he's here for empower us. We don't have to pretend anything because we serve a powerful God. Powerful. And there is no thing that he can't do. No excuses. You see, one day the master is going to return. And when he does, he'll want to know what you've done with this precious life you've been given. Were we good stewards of what belonged to him? Did we grow his investment in us? Or did we bury our time, talent, and opportunities? It's up to us to decide, but we had better decide quickly, you know? Okay. Is that smoking or non-smoking section is waiting for us and it's our decision but the important thing to know is whatever section you choose is going to last for eternity eternity the master is planning his return and he's going to be back any day moving on to answering the call In matthew 28 Verses 19 through 20, it tells us, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Master Life class, you should finish this here. Okay. Uh, one of our memory verses. Okay. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that he has commanded us to do. And he tells us, lo, I am with you. 
You see, he's never going to leave us or forsake us. So now, as some of you may know, Sandy and I have just completed co-facilitating uh, the 24-week Master Life Discipleship class. What a blessing it was. You know, the Master Life Discipleship course was designed to enable the participants to develop an intimate, personal, lifelong, obedient relationship with God our Father through the obedience of Jesus Christ and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And even though it took us 32 weeks to complete, we did journey through the process of learning and practicing things like the six biblical disciplines of a disciple, developing Christ-likeness in our character. We learned how to live in the spirit. We learned how to experience victories over the world, the flesh and the devil by using spiritual warfare. And finally, being able to join God's mission of making disciples by edifying the stages or identifying the stages of spiritual growth, identifying our spiritual gifts, um, our roles in applying those spiritual gifts, and specific ministry. You know, almost every day, at least five days a week, and we engaged in spending time with the master, living in the word, praying in faith, fellowshipping with believers, witnessing to the world, and ministering to others. It was such a blessing and continues to, to be. By can, uh, committing to, um, to memory uh, approximately you know, we memorized about 30 different Bible verses. Okay. Um, and there'll be a test later to see if you guys remember <laughs> all those okay. throughout the weeks. Okay. And by doing so, we were able to develop and share our, our personal testimonies, in which many of you heard at Wednesday night Bible studies. Okay. We learned how to utilize um, spiritual interventions as far as witnessing to a new believers um, and helping them grow along their, their spiritual sanctification. You know, the various stages we learned about and are now able to recognize in our own life as well as someone we that God may put in our, in our life, you know, the spiritually dead. Okay. Um, working to grow them up to become a spiritual child by including them in everything we're doing, okay, and developing relationships, okay, training them through examples, okay, because we're told, be ye imitators of me. Paul says it, and so does Jesus. Okay. Um, you know, equipping them um, with the help of the Holy Spirit and becoming disciple makers. And then finally, as apply, which is the whole goal okay, of Christ's plan for us to multiply us, we then, you know, experiencing commissioning, the commissioning to become co laborers in ministry. So, Sandy and I, we can both testify that spending the last 32 weeks with each group member has produced an overwhelming love and affection for each of them. Yeah. Don't make me cry. <laughs> Our time together has been truly reminiscent of the love experienced by the early believers of the church as they broke bed, fellowship, and glorified the Lord together as written about and we learn about in the book of Acts. Sandy and I are so proud of the spiritual growth and dedication displayed by each member of the group. In fact, many of you, okay, in the body have witnessed and, and made comments to us on the individual growth that they've seen in those members. 
that you became aware of with your own eyes. Now, just a quick FYI, can't miss a chance to promote. Okay, If you're thinking that this spiritual growth is something that you'd like to experience, let it be made known that another Master Life Discipleship class is already being planned for in early January. Don't miss out. You don't have to do this thing alone. You don't have to do this thing alone. But yet. <laughs> Heck with that, we're going to get you to help lead it. And, uh, on a personal note, this process has been invigorating and instilled in me an excelled dedication and commitment to the ministry of discipleship. This is my calling, which has been echoed for me by something I read by an African pastor that was running a Master Life class. And this is, I want to read it to you because it's, it's become my mantra. You ready? I'm part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of his. I won't look back, let up, slow down, or slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, mundane talking, and cheap living, as well as dwarfed gold. I'm no longer, I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, platitudes, or popularity. I don't have the right, I, I don't have to be right. Right. Okay. I, I don't have to be first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on his presence, walk by patience, lift by power and labor by power. My face is set, my, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few, my guide is reliable, but my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the uh, adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pull of popularity, or meander in the maze of uh, mediocrity. Which is amazing because those are all the things I was invested in in my fleshly walk. No more. No more need. We have God, and Jesus Christ as our Savior, who empowers us through the Holy Spirit. So the bottom line it closes with, I won't give up, shut up, let up, until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go. Till he comes, give till I drop, preach till all I uh, to all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem in recognizing me, as my banner is going to be clear. I'm a warrior. So are all of us. Now, lastly, at this time, Sandy and I would like to acknowledge the Master Life Discipleship class, which has now become our family. 
and award them with their certificate of completion and allow them to make any statements. You guys didn't know this. So you can't. Allow them to make any statements uh, of what master life has meant to them, if you'd like. So members of master life, if I could get you to come up here one by one as I announce your name. Where's Layla? Oh, <laughs> Layla. If we could just get you to stand up here while everybody receives their diplomas and Thank certificates. Ginny, come on down. Dickie, come on down. Troy. Shauna. And lastly, Wade. Now, if I could ask you, the members of the Body of Christ of New Hope Volcano, to come on up and encircle these disciples and lay our hands on them in order to anoint them in prayer as they are commissioned so we can send them out into their God-given ministries. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for these disciples, Lord. We thank you for the way that you have touched their hearts, instilled in them the Holy Spirit, helped them understand what their specific spiritual gifts are, and placed on their heart a specific area of ministry. We at New Hope Volcano commission these disciples, Lord, to go out and engage in the areas of ministry that you have placed on their line. And Father God, we ask that you would help them continue to do the very things that we learn to do almost every day to give you all the glory and honor and praise and grow in our love for you. May we be a blessing to you. New Hope Volcano, and may we be a blessing to those that we would have opportunity to disciple, witness, evangelize to, Father God. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you've given them. May they always glorify you. And in Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well done, good and faithful service. I got you. <laughs> <laughs>
Father God, I want to take this moment to thank you for today. Pray that you touch hearts in here. Your presence. Father God, I want to thank you. I want to ask you. Thank you for blessing us with all of your provisions, Father God, as we get ready to go and enjoy some food lines that we prepared from loving hearts, and that you bless it that it goes to the top. You guys need to say? Yes, Luke, our very first one was Luke 9.23. Whoever wants to be my disciple, very specific tool for us in the yard and I went to Lowe's. Everybody please say Lowe's. Lowe's. Okay, Lowe's is the other home depot. <laughs> and uh, so I was reporting that uh, people were asking, well, how did it go? And I said, well, it didn't go well. I was there for one hour. I flew there. I rented a truck to get this mower, riding mower, small one. Didn't work. They had five mowers outside. They all didn't work. <laughs> I was there for one hour, and uh, so people were asking, "Well, how did it? You know, how did you handle that?" Very frustrating. It is it, if you you know, as, as Happy was saying, it is frustrating if that's the way you look at it. But if you look at it as an opportunity given to you by the Lord, which is what He was teaching Master Life the last. I was going to say 24, but he said 32 weeks, then uh, it's an opportunity. So the man that was helping me eventually was a manager named Justin. And Justin said, okay, Mr. Lawyer, I have to call to the other stores to see if I can find a more for you. If I can find a more for you, I'm going to give you 20% off. I'm going to waive the $79 fee to take it to Young Brothers so it can be shipped to you. But I got to find it. And I said, well, how long will it take? He said, well, I got a call. Might take some time. I don't know. Hour, two hours, maybe the rest of the day. I said, well, let me just give you the my number <clears throat> and you let me know because uh, I'm going to go back to the airport and go home since I'm not taking it today. He said, oh, all right. And I gave him my phone number. He said, let me just take the email address just in case. And I said, okay, here's my email address. And I started to spell it out. D as in Paul, a S as in seven, T O R R A Y, and then the number seven, and then the, at MSN.com. And then he said, Are you a pastor? And I, said, I said, Yes, I am. He said, I knew there was a reason why you've been so patient, which, is, which I'm sharing with you that whether people tell you or not, if you identify as a believer, there is an expectation. There's an expectation of a certain kind of behavior. In this case, it was patience. He was looking or that he was seeing. That was the reason why this guy has so much patience. This, this is the reason why this guy didn't flip out. He flew from the big island to get a more. I can't do it. Everything is going wrong. That's why he's like that. So he said, I knew it. And I said, Justin, do you know the Bible? And he said, no, no, not too much. I said, you go to the contents, table of contents, there's a New Testament and an Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there's a book called Isaiah. Chapter 40 says, those that wait upon the Lord. Justin, I'm not waiting on you. I'm waiting on the Lord. Even though I'm standing right here in Lowe's, 
Those that wait upon the Lord will, here's the promise, renew their strength. Justin, I've been renewing my strength for the last hour. <laughs> because the Lord is unwilling to run. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's why the Bible is so important. That's why the focus of pastor life is so right on. Because you're going to have opportunity like I just had at Lowell's in Honolulu. And you can't get your material out. You got to know it. You got to get ready. You got to say the scripture, whatever it would, would have been that would be appropriate. Come to all people. That's right. That's right. That's right. Home people is very wise, but they don't carry this broken down line. You can't get your hand. Gee, sorry. Okay. The first Peter. Fifteen. Have to read it. Sorry. <laughs> Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you with the reason. For Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to sing one more song. If you feel like singing, stay in the room and sing. If you feel like you're ready for your refreshments, just head out the door there on my left. Refreshments are ready. Tables are ready to go. If you're going to head out, because the day is looking good, lots of sunshine, please be careful when you get to Highway 11, as the cars go very quickly up and down. Whatever you decide to do, um, God bless you, and have a great week. Gracias.